Hi folks, this is Jason. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. Uh, we're looking at uh, more historical facts about Jesus Christ being uh, a real historical figure. And um, we're looking at Jewish evidence uh, in the just after Jesus of Jesus existing as a real person. Again, my source book today is uh, Josh McDowell, Evidence that demands a verdict which is a really really helpful book and uh, you can always uh, check out this information they're always using uh, excellent scholars in here and uh, it's an excellent book the atheists will try to debunk it but uh, the thing about the atheists you gotta watch them they do like to twist the facts okay uh, the Jewish reference to Jesus historicity the crucifixion in the Babylonian Talmud Talmud, we read it has been taught on the eve of Passover they hanged Yeshua. An announcer went out in front of him for 40 days saying he is going to be stoned because he practiced sorcery and enticed and led Israel astray. Anyone who knows anything in his favor, let him come and plead in his behalf. But not having found anything in his favor, they hanged him on the eve of Passover. Um, and there's a list of writings there of where those comments were, were made in, in the um, various sort of Jewish writings. Another version of the text says Yeshua the Nazarene. Yeshua translated through Greek to English as Jesus and the reference to him being a Nazarene makes the link to Jesus Christ even stronger. Moreover the word hanged is another way of referring to crucifixion. The Talmud writes the Jewish scholar Joseph Closer speaks of hanging in, in place of crucifixion since this horrible Roman form of death was only known to Jewish scholars from Roman trials Roman uh, trials and not from the Jewish legal system even Paul uh, the Apostle Galatians 3.13 expands the passage for cursed of God that which is hanged Deuteronomy 21.23 as applicable to Jesus also the reference to this crucifixion occurred on the eve of Passover agrees with John. Therefore this text clearly affirms the historicity of Jesus and his death. It also affirms that the Jewish authorities were involved in the sentencing but it tries to justify their actions. In a backhanded way it even attests to Jesus' miracles but it attempts to explain them away as the work of a sorcerer or a magician responding uh, a response mentioned by the gospel writers. Following this Jewish text appears sorry following this Jewish text appears a comment by the late third century Amora Ulla which states would you believe that any defense would have been so zealously sought for him he was a deceiver and the all merciful says you shall not spur him neither shall you conceal him it was different with Jesus for he was near to the kingship this phrase near to the kingship may refer to Jesus genealogical descent from Israel's King David or it may denote Pilate's washing his hands before turning Jesus over to scourging and crucifixion. In a later Talmud passage, uh, Talmudic passage on Jesus' crucifixion comes a passage that asserts that Jesu had five disciples, Mate, Nakiai, Netzer, Bunai and Toda. While Matthew may be referenced to Matthew, no one is sure that that the other names can be identified with any of the other disciples named in the gospel account. The claim that Jesus had five disciples could be explained by the fact that the other teachers in the Talmud, Johann, uh, Johann ben Zakia and Agippa are, all, are also described as having five disciples or students. At any rate, one thing is sure, this text makes it clear that the Jewish tradition accepted the facts that the Rabbi Jesus did have followers. Then the virgin birth in the uh, Talmud, the title Ben Pandera or Ben Pantir and Jeshu Ben Pandir are used of Jesus. Many scholars say Pandera is a play on words, a travesty on the Greek word for virgin, which is uh, Parthenos. The Jewish scholar Joseph Clauser says the Jewish constantly heard the Jews constantly heard that the Christians, the majority of whom spoke Greek from the earliest times, called Jesus by the name Son of the Virgin. 
and so in mockery they called him Ben Ha Pentera, the son of a leopard. In another passage, the Babylonian Talmud states, R. Shimeon Ben Azia said concerning Jesus, I found a genealogical role in Jerusalem wherein was recorded such as one is a bastard of an adulteress. In yet another passage, we find his mother was Miriam, a woman's hairdresser, as they say, this one strayed from her husband. In still another passage, we are told that Mary, who was the descendant of the princes and governors, played the harlot with carpenters. Basically, basically, there's a stack of evidence there of early Jewish writings that are talking about Jesus. These Jews were anti-Jesus, and yet they unwittingly recorded uh, Jesus' existence. And I'm going to read your thesis as well, because I know some of you say, oh, it's not really uh, authentic, but let's just listen. Joseph ben uh, Matthias, born 33, perhaps 38 AD, died after 100 AD, writes Professor John P. Meyer, was by turns a Jewish aristocrat, priestly politician, and no eager commander of rebel troops in Galilee during the first Jewish revolt against Rome, 66-73 AD. A tricky turncoat, a Jewish historian in the pay of the Flavian emperors and a supposed Pharisee. Captured by Vespian in 67, he served the Romans as mediator and interpreter during the rest of the revolt. Brought to Rome, he composed three, their two great works, the Jewish War written in the early 70s and the much longer Jewish Antiquities finished about 93-94 AD. Flavius Josephus became part of the emperor's inner circle. In fact, he was given the emperor's name, Flavius, as his Roman name, and Josephus is his Jewish name. In his Jewish antiquities, a passage occurs that has created heated debate among scholars. This is how it reads. Now, there was about this time Jesus, a wise man, if it be lawful to call him a man, for he was a doer of wonderful works, a teacher of such men as received the truth with pleasure. He drew over to him both many of the Jews and many of the Gentiles. He was the Christ, and when Pilate, at the suggestion of the principal men among us, had condemned him to the cross, those that loved him at the first did not forsake him, for he appeared to them alive and again the third day, as the divine prophets had foretold these and ten thousand under wonderful things concerning him, as the tribe of Christians so named from him are not extinct to at this day. I won't go into the ins and outs of the position scholars have taken on this passage, which has come to be known as Testimonium. For a more detailed discussion of the debate, see my book, He Walked Among Us. Instead, let me just say that those passages has raised fury because Josephus, a non-Christian Jew, makes statements about Jesus that an Orthodox Jew could not affirm. For instance, he refers to Jesus as the Christ and claims that he rose from the dead as the Hebrew prophets had foretold. After assessing the evidence for myself, I find myself agreeing with those scholars who see that while some Christian additions, notably the phrase italized above, have been made to the text that are clearly foreign to it, the testimonium contains a good deal of truth that Josephus could have easily affirmed, as Meyer states. Read the testimonium without the italized passages and you will see that the flow of thought is clear. Josephus calls Jesus by the generic title wise man. Josephus then proceeded to unpack the generic designation wise men, the two of its main components, the grecio romian world, miracle and effective teaching. The double display of wisdom wins Jesus a large following among both Jews and Gentiles, and presumably, though not explicit, reason is given. It is this huge success, huge success that moves the leading men to accuse Jesus before Pilate. Despite Jesus' shameful death on the cross, his early adherents to do not give up their loyalty to him, and so note the transition is much better without the reference to the resurrection in the deleted passage. The tribe of Christians has not yet died out. So, I'll just read um, someone else on, 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 on the testimonium. Following this testimonium, a couple of sections later, Josephus refers to James, the brother of Jesus. He ascribes the action of the high priest Annas, but the younger Annas, who, as we said, received a high priesthood, was a bold disposition and exceptionally daring. He followed the party of the Sadducees, who are severe 
in judgment above all the Jews as we have already shown. As therefore Annas was of such disposition he thought he had now a good opportunity as Festus was now dead and Albinus was still on the road so he assembled a council of judges and brought before it the brother of Jesus the so called Christ whose name was James together with some others and having accused them of lawbreakers he delivered them over to the stone to be stoned. Louis Feldman a uh, professor of classics at uh, Yeshiva University and translator for the uh, edition of the Antiquity states few have doubted the genuineness of this passage so I think if you take the whole of the quotes of Josephus uh, two of them I think actually it's a strong case that actually Josephus is testifying to the historicity of Jesus and I think it's not fair I think it's lying to actually say that Jesus is a myth and to try and take away what Josephus has been saying about Jesus Christ. What do you think? Let me know. And atheist, look at the facts, and the facts show that Christ was a historical figure. What do you think, folks? Let me know. Take care now, and God bless.